I'm getting blasted with static of some kind. Like, silence. I don't have ears right now. so grateful that you're with us 
Those of you that are joining us here in the room, those of you that are joining us from home, we have this awesome opportunity in the middle of whatever is going on to turn our eyes towards the Lord and realize that there is a testimony that each one of us has that's been called by his name, that we have gone from death to life. Think about that for a moment. That's what it means to be in Christ, to have gone from death to life. And I think those of us who've had a pretty good life so far, you might not realize that there was a time, there was a time before we were in Christ, that we were in death, in the kingdom of this world, but through Christ and his love and his, his sacrificial gift for us, we have come into new life, amen? amen. Let that get in you this morning, because if it does, you'll be motivated to be a part of what we're doing here and lifting up the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. All right. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I need a little help from you today because right now I've got these ears that are supposed to tell me a lot. They help me sync up with the band and sync up with time, but it's almost like they have been muted because I can hear hiss but no signal. And so that is not a great place for a worship leader to be kind of feels like flying blind. So I'm going to trust these guys. I'm going to trust you guys to help me be where I need to be, okay? <laughs> does that sound safe? No? No, I agree. It does not sound safe. But we're going to see what happens here because we're going to keep worshiping the Lord no matter what technology does. He is good. Amen? Go ahead.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, you have given us new life. You have written our name in the Lamb's book of life. We praise you. We thank you, Jesus.
here with my heart in your hands Father I pray make me more like Jesus this world is dying to know who you are you've shown us the way to your heart so Father I pray make your prayer this morning. It's so true, these words that we've sung, this world is dying to know you. hungry and thirsty for things they don't even know. They don't know what will satisfy that true and deep heart's longing. Only you, Lord Jesus. Only you, only you Lord Jesus. So Lord, I pray that we would go forth from this place as people who are truly satisfied and truly thirsting for more of you. Truly satisfied because we've been given the only thing in this world that can ever satisfy. And truly thirsting for more and more of you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to gather to celebrate what you've done and what you're doing, and Lord, to look with eager anticipation towards what you'll do. You've been so good to us, Lord Jesus. You've been so good to us, Lord Jesus. So God, I pray that you give us open hearts to receive what your spirit has to say to each one this morning. Pray these things in Jesus' name, and everybody that agreed said, amen. Amen. Let's praise him out loud. Why not? Do me a favor here in the room. Can you turn to somebody near you and make them feel welcome? Even better than that, turn to somebody far from you. Go ahead and share the love of Jesus today, whether it's a wave or a fist bump, a hug. Yeah, people still do that. And those of you joining us from home, we're so grateful that you did. It's a beautiful day to serve Jesus. No matter what's going on in the world around us, he is faithful. I, fi I feel that in myself today. Like, man, I'm, 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 I'm here and there and everywhere, but he is constant and faithful. And so I pray that you have been visited by his presence this morning. Um, if you've never had the opportunity to, to meet somebody from our team, from our family, if you look there in the chat window, there's a link that you can click. Or if you want to just send us a wave emoji or something, one of our hosts would love to just reach out and have kind of a digital fist bump, say hi to you. You can also find us on our website, 1agbn.org. And there's a, a, a page where you can go and click if you're new here. We just want to get to know you, see anything that we can do to, to be a support to you. Uh, we're grateful that the Lord has given us a community like this, and we're thankful that you've chosen to be a part of it as well from right there where you are. For over four decades, United Marriage Encounter has been successfully strengthening bonds between husbands and wives all over the world. At your UME weekend, you'll learn practical methods to improve communication with your spouse and grow in Christ together. Our course is designed as a starting point to transform the way you communicate and relate with the person you love most. 
because stronger relationships create stronger families, churches, and communities. Here's what a few happy couples had to say after their UME experience. I think one significant thing we learned is to better communicate how to express our feelings, whether they, they might be love or anger or passion or whatever it might be, to display what we're feeling and how we, we feel towards certain areas in our life. And I'd have to say that God plowed our hearts and planted seeds that has even spilled over into how we relate to our children. We've noticed the difference this week that we're reaching their hearts as well. And it helped us to uh, communicate, which was one of our very big weaknesses, was communication. And now it's uh, we've been dialoguing ever since, and it's just been a wonderful weekend. Visit our register page to find a United Marriage Encounter location near you. Because everyone wins when marriage gets better. Well, we're so grateful that the Lord has blessed this church with some amazing marriages. You know that? There's some marriages here that, are, that have been going on longer than I've been breathing. And you know what that is? A miracle. <laughs> because it's only by the grace of God that marriages can, can continue and, and can thrive. And that's by God's design. And so... That's why we want to, we've taken time out of a handful of services here. We want you to be a part of this opportunity. It's coming up on April the 29th through May the 1st, and you can sign up at unitedmarriage.com. Oh, .org. I've got a .com on my sheet, but .org is the one you want. So uh, the hunt is coming. You guys heard about it? It's coming. It's right around the bend, just a couple of weeks away. And uh, the question I have for you this morning is, have you invited your friends and neighbors? Even if they have a home church, this is an opportunity that we could just bless and encourage our community. And so there's an invite on the chair next to you or under your neighbor. Don't go hunting. Just ask for help if you can't see it. Um, but we are excited. We've got a tremendous volunteer already pulled together. Our entire setup and cleanup crew are set but we are still praying that the Lord will help us with 50 more volunteers to help serve during the event. So if you haven't signed up yet, if you stop by the table where that big old Tootsie Roll is hanging from the roof, uh, we would love to have you help us sign up. There's a card there that you can fill out and drop off, or that card also has a QR code if it's easier for you to do the digital sign up. Do you guys know how many eggs we give away every year? 40,000 eggs. And uh, those eggs do not arrive here full of candy. Uh, those eggs are eggs that we put together here on property. So if you're interested in being a part of that process, we would love to have you. Because we are stuffing eggs, not as we speak, but in second service when I say this, it will be as we speak. Um, we've been doing it. We started it uh, last week and it's been ongoing every single day. People stopping by. And uh, you could be a part of that either by filling eggs or by helping us to have the contents to fill those eggs. So if you want to drop off candy in the lobby or if you want to give using the app or through the website, there's a category, kids or the hunt, you can follow through on that and we'd love to have you help us with that. I want to share a special word with you from our Kid Nation pastor, Pastor Ryan. Check this out. Hey, First Assembly, Pastor Ryan here. What a joy it is that we get to partner with God in building His kingdom globally, locally, and into the next generation. For the past few years, our church has done a great job in reaching special needs families during our big events. Whether it's creating a safe, special place during our egg hunt, or even bringing in a sensory truck trailer at our trunk or treat, special needs families in our community have been so thankful for our thought and consideration. We believe God has compelled us to create a safe space that welcomes and is available for special needs families. A word special needs families may understand more than many of us is a sensory room. This is a safe space for a family to still engage with us, but in a space that would help meet some of their family's needs. An example would be a room where the family can still engage by TV with our live service while someone in their family may benefit from jumping on a trampoline 
or putting together a puzzle. To create this space, we believe $3,000 would help us get started and provide a space that would benefit special needs families. Being a special needs parent myself, I want you to know what our church is communicating by providing this space without even saying a word. What we're saying to special needs families is this. We see you. We value your family. You're part of our church family. And this is a huge statement for our church to make to our community. And this is us taking an important step in building God's kingdom so that everyone, that means all people everywhere, can be restored back to God. So as you pray and God would put this upon your heart, give to Kingdom Builders. Let's continue to work together to see God's kingdom built globally, locally, and in the next generation. God bless you. I love that guy. I just listen to him talk. <laughs> You may have noticed a couple of things from that video. Number one, you may have noticed the jazz flute. That's not something you get to hear in church a lot, so that's a special treat for you guys this morning. You may not have noticed that. That might just be me, based on your response. <laughs> but you may have noticed the number 3,000. And for some of us, that might sound like a really large number. For some of us, it doesn't sound like a very large number. But I do want you to know that that number is a high impact number. And so I want to invite you, wherever you are this morning, whatever, however that number sounds to you, we want to invite you to be a part of this. This is something that is not, it's not like a, a side thing. It's not an ancillary idea that we have. This is core to who we believe we are as a church that's diverse. Diversity extends beyond just the idea of ethnicity. Diversity is people of all learning types, people of all personality types. And so that's why you even get stuck with me sometimes. <laughs> but we, you can't win them all. Exactly, Rich. You're right. <laughs> and so we want to do what we can to minister to the families of our community. And we believe this is a strategic way for us to do that. And we want to invite you to be part of that. Whether for you that's a couple of dollars, whether for you that's a number closer to that number, we're already in motion. We're, the, 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 the space that it's going to be taking place in it has already been reworked, and there's, there's sanding and painting and all kinds of stuff taking place already. So we believe in this, and we want you to have the opportunity to be a part of it. That's really what this is about. There's lots of stuff that happens at this church and so sometimes when you hear us sharing about these different things, it's like, oh, man, they're asking me for something again. They're asking me for something again. And I understand that feeling. That, that makes some sense. But if that's how it feels, that's on us. Because we don't want you to feel that way. What we want you to feel like is we're offering you something. We're offering you the opportunity to be a part of something really special. And if, if you're a part of this room, you could be a part of touching an entire family. When, when we give, when we're faithful to the Lord by giving him his tithes, the overall mission of this church moves forward. So if this is not your church home, then this particular comment is not for you. But those of us who call this our church home, we have the opportunity to be a part of what God is doing through this, to see the mission move forward. Are you tracking with me? So a couple of really practical things. Of course, you guys know you can do it through the web. You can do it through our app. There are, are boxes in the lobby. There's one right there by the door, and then there's one on, on the wall as you walk out. These are some of the, the physical or digital ways that we can be a part of investing in what the Lord is doing around us. And not just immediately around us. I've got some photos I want to share with you guys. You may be able to make sense of them right away. Do you guys know what this is? These are some photos from the missions trip that is going on right now, way out in Arizona. And I say way out because they drove most of the team all the way to Arizona. This is the first part of the team. There's two other groups that are going to be meeting them, and they're actually all gathering for the first time right now as we speak. So this is just 
a portion of the team. And this is one of our Kingdom Builders initiatives back in November. Uh, so many gave so generously to be a part of, of a well-being drilled to serve the Navajo Nation, not just with fresh water, but with living water. This well is going to be associated with a church project that's being planted. And our church has sent our dollars, we have sent our people, and we're going to be a part of the message of Jesus being sent into this community. Does that excite you? That excites me. That last song that we just sang, I love that song. That's one of those ones that, man, when I first heard it, it just grabbed me by the heart. But one of the words, I, one of the lines that I love from it is when it says, this world is dying to know who you are. And you've shown us the way to your heart. That is beautiful. The, the people that this team is ministering to are not people who are unspiritual. The people that are going to be touched by this are not people who are atheistic and feel like, oh man, I got this on. I, all I need to depend on is my bank account. These are people who have deep spiritual beliefs. But as followers of Jesus, we know these are defective beliefs. And what we believe is there's one way to know the Father, and that's through the Son. And so we want to see that message go forward. We want to see this message reach people all over the world, and we have the opportunity to be a part of that. So whether that's by taking part through kingdom builders giving or by returning to the Lord his tithes, we have the opportunity to be a part of what the Lord is doing in our community and around the world. Will you pray with me this morning? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness to us. God, you've been so generous to us and met our needs in so many beautiful ways. God, you've done for us what we could not do for ourselves, and so much more. We thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity that we have to be a part of your kingdom message going forth into all the world. And so I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would take these gifts of ours, bless them, multiply them, use them for your purposes, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I got good news for you. You don't have to hear me preach today. <laughs> Pastor Joel is, of course, in Arizona, so he's not going to preach either. And so we have a, a friend of Pastor Joel's who goes way back with him. Sorry, that was kind of a strong way. That just happened in my voice. I didn't mean to do that like that. Forgive me, Dave. So our, our guest this morning is Dave Short, and uh, he is the Church Engagement Director for Christians Against Poverty. He is also the executive director of, of a new ministry called Provision Lab that's doing some really exciting things uh, in the community where, where he and his beautiful wife live. And so I, without any further ado, I'm going to have him come and share a little bit about himself and the ministry at our ministry this morning. So can you make him feel welcome today, Dave Short? Hey. Uh, thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. So after a, a long, long day of training and ministry in Central Florida, a friend of mine, uh, we were driving back to Miami. We were passing through Miami on our way to a hotel. And we were supposed to take an early flight uh, out of Miami uh, that next morning to come back to Chicago. But man, and we arrived in, we were passing through Miami, it, very late, and, but I was starving. And then I saw this Cracker Barrel sign. Oh my gosh. I said, Nick, I, I know we need to get to the hotel and it's late, but man, dude, can we just stop at Cracker Barrel? And he said, sounds good to me. We were both hungry. So we get in there and sit down and there is this I don't know if you've ever been in a restaurant and you're tired and this waitress has so much energy. It just kind of like wears you out. And uh, so anyhow, she comes and she's, she's a young college age young lady and she's vibrant and she's, you know, excited, it seems excited about life. And anyhow, so she just said, you know, glad you're here and give you some time to look at the menu. So she leaves the menus. I look at Nick and I say, Nick, I said, you know, why don't we just go ahead and pray over the food right now uh, before we get it and order, you know, and then once we get the food, man, dude, we can scarf it down. He goes, yeah, that's good. So 
we bowed our head, we prayed over the food that wasn't there yet. And then the waitress came back and she took our orders <clears throat> and then she brought us the food. And then, you know, as a good waitress would do, she says, is there anything else that we can do for you? And then all of a sudden, this, this thought came into my head. I said, well, I said, yes, I, my friend and I, Nick, we typically pray over our food when we get it. And I was wondering if, if maybe you might have a prayer need in your life that my friend Nick and I could pray over when we pray over our food. And Nick is looking at me like, like didn't we just pray over our food? <laughs> and I felt a little awkward. <laughs> and so anyhow, she says, you want me to pray over your food? I go, no, 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 no. No, if you have a prayer need and I'd like to pray for you, and all of a sudden, she stepped back from the table, and she goes, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can't believe this. I can't believe I thought, oh, my, oh my God, myself. I said, are you okay? And uh, she said, you know, my life is crazy. I mean, I am not doing good in school. I'm in debt to school, and I'm not making enough money. And all of a sudden, she just starts, like, pouring herself out at the table. And at that moment, I was saying, where's my wife when I need her? <laughs> and uh, I said, you know what? I said, you know, Nick and I, we, we'll, we'll pray for you and pray that, that God would, uh, would meet your need. He can do it. So she left. Nick and I prayed for her. And then I, I looked at Nick. I said, I said, dude, I said, I said what, how much money you got in your wallet? I, I said, I got, I got $20 here. Uh, what do you got? He goes, well, I've got about 15. I go, well, let's just leave a tip for her. Let's just bless her, right? He goes, all right, let's do that. So then she comes back and she, you know, she was, you know, doing her waitress thing. And she says, you know what's crazy? And I said, what's that? She said, there's a lady in the back. She's been trying to get me to go to church for months. And I just keep telling her, no, 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 I don't want to go to church. I don't want to do any of that. But I went back and I told her what you just did, that you wanted to pray for me. And then I told her, I said, you know what? I want to go to church with you this Sunday. I was just like, whoa, fast moving Holy Spirit, right? And so anyhow, Nick and I, we, we, put, the, we put the money in the napkin and we might make a little note and we said, you know, that God brought us here from Chicago, passing through Miami to meet you and to let you know that God knows your need, your financial need. And we just want to be a part of helping meet that need, that kind of note. And so we laid the napkin down, put the money out a little bit, and uh, she came back and I said, uh, you know, I, I just, we want to leave, uh, leave some money here. She goes, well, no, you pay up at the front. And I said, no, this is for you. This is a tip for you right here. And she opens the napkin. She reads the note. She sees the money. And she just starts weeping. And I didn't know exactly what to do. Uh, Valerie, <laughs> where are you? <laughs> but we prayed for her right there in Cracker Barrel, and tears are rolling down her cheeks, and probably everybody around was like, what is going on? And I tell that story because it highlights the vast opportunities that are outside our door. Opportunities that I call divine disruptions. Can you say divine disruptions? <laughs> the definition of disruption is a break or interruption in the normal course or continuation of some activity or process. And I believe that God is a God of divine disruptions. And he wants to bring those disruptions across our path on a daily, on a weekly basis. And we have got to be, first off, alert. We've got to be 
aware and observant to the opportunities that are given each and every one of us. Last week, Chris spoke over a victory over temptation. This week, I want to talk about a victory over hesitation. Matthew 5.14 says this in the message. It says, you're here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. We've got to be observant, looking for ways to go public with our faith. It doesn't mean smash people with it. But it means, God, open up opportunities for me. Let me observe something that's going on that I can somehow share that you are real to be a light on the hill. I was raised in what I call a faith-free family. Free of faith, free of church, free of religion, no church upbringing. I grew up here in Normal. I went to normal community high school. Don't hold that against me if you're from Bloomington. I lettered in several sports, but I received all conference honors and honorable mention, all state honors in football. And then I received a full ride scholarship to Southern Illinois University, Carbondale. And it was there that I met and got to know my head coach, Ray Dempsey, who was a city on a hill. He was unapologetic in his faith. He, he lived his faith out loud. And I saw it. I observed it. I didn't like it at first. But all of a sudden, I was being introduced to a Jesus that I had never heard of before because he was faithful to the message. The goal of my message today is that your eyes would be open to the divine disruptions that God wants to bring to your life, that you would know and see the vast opportunities that are outside the front door of your home and your apartment that God wants to bring across your path. And I pray that someone might come to faith through this message because you get beyond the hesitation and you just walk in obedience and you reach out and touch somebody with God's love. And that all of a sudden, somebody might come to faith through what you do. In Luke 19, beginning in verse 1, it says, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through, kind of like entering Miami, <laughs> and passing through. Jericho was not his ultimate destination. He was on his way to Jerusalem. It was his final journey. He had a lot on his mind. There was a lot of things going on. He, he was a businessman. He had 12 disciples he had to take care of and all the other people that were following him, right? He was a busy dude, and he had a lot on his mind. But it says this. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. And he wanted to see who Jesus was because he was short. <laughs> I can relate because he was short, and Joel could relate too. Joel, I, <laughs> he won't have me back again. Because <laughs> he could not see over the crowd, and that is my problem. <laughs> but what a, what, an, a, what a crazy response, right, that we see in Zacchaeus ultimately. And I think the miracle of Bartimaeus was probably a key part in this whole thing because blind, I kind of call him bold Bartimaeus because he's pretty bold. And bold Bartimaeus reached out to Jesus and Jesus healed his blindness. And Bartimaeus, being Bar, son of Timaeus, he was probably, and we don't know for sure, but he was probably well known. His father was well known. And all of a sudden he is healed of blindness because of Jesus' obedience and then all of a sudden, it's probably the whole, all of Jericho is like a buzz, right? It's, it's passing through the village, and all of a sudden, this tax collector gets wind of it, and he's like, dude, I want to see this guy. I want to see who Jesus was, is. 
And then it says in verse 4, so he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. And when Jesus reached the spot, okay, here's where the divine disruption is about to take place, right? Jesus is just passing through. Like many of us, we are passing through. Walmart is not our final destination. Yeah, thank God. Okay. Maybe Sam's, maybe, maybe Starbucks, maybe we're passing through the, the county market grocery store, or, we're, or we're, we're passing through wherever we may be going, but it's not our final destination, it's not our ultimate destination. Miami was not, that, that Cracker Barrel was not my, I was just passing through, it wasn't my final destination. That hotel and getting my head on that pillow was my final destination. But as I was passing through, all of a sudden I was having a divine disruption. And all of a sudden Jesus is going to experience a divine disruption. And this is where the problem occurs, right, with us. Is that all of a sudden we see the, we see the circumstances, we see the situation, we see this guy up in a tree, dude. I mean, there's something going on with this guy, right? There's some signs here that God's at work maybe. And we see it. But he looks up, and that's where the hesitation, where the paralysis of analysis takes place in our lives, right? We're not sure, should I say something? How will they respond? I, you know, instead of asking yourself, what's the worst thing that could happen? We need to start telling ourselves, what's the best thing that could happen? What if I do say something? What if I do ask a question? What if I do enter into a conversation? What is the best that could happen? Dude, you could have a Zacchaeus moment. You could have a waitress Cracker Barrel moment. It could be a moment, a divine disruption that changes a person's life forever. Because we're willing to overcome the hesitation. And we're willing to step forward into a divine disruption even though man ah, I ain't got the time for this Ah, I'm I'm just here to get my groceries Ah. (laughs) I didn't have this plan but I I I was at a I don't know why it happens at restaurants but I was at a Panera and I was sitting there minding my own business and I God knows, I did not want to talk to anybody. I wanted my quiet time. I wanted to read my book. And I wanted to have a little cup of coffee and enjoy my little scone or whatever it was. But God, don't disrupt me. And all of a sudden, I I catch on the corner of my head, there's this young lady over in the corner, and she's on the phone, and you could tell it was pretty intense. And I looked away and I said, no, 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 no. (laughs) Not now. (laughs) God, please help me. (laughs) No, I don't want to do this. And so I'm, I'm, okay, I'm I'm, I'm in the book. And then I, I look over again and she's still on that phone. And then all of a sudden she goes outside and she's pacing back and forth. And I said, all right, all right. So I got my stuff together, got my book. I went over and sat at a a table close to her. She came back in. She opened her laptop, and she's just sitting there staring at it. And and I, here's the moment, right? The awkward moment. A young lady, a strange dude. Uh, ma'am? And she, oh, it shocked her a little bit, you know? She kind of looked at me, and I, I go, Excuse me, I'm so sorry, but, you know, I observed that you were having a phone conversation that seemed to be challenging, and, and I just wondered if there was something I could do for you. And she started to cry, and she said, I had a job lined up in California, and then my mom had a heart attack, and I couldn't make it to California in time for this teaching position, this dance. I'm a dance instructor, art major. And she said, I, I had to stay here with my mom. And I was just on the phone with them in California, and they've said that they've had to give my job to somebody else. And I, 
had the U-Haul truck, and it might not have been U-Haul, but it was a company like that, and I had everything that I own, I had it sent to California, but then I got another call that said the truck was found in Canada, and the person that had picked up all her stuff had, had hijacked it and taken it all the way to Canada and ripped off stuff, but left the truck and some of the remains there, and there was a police officer calling because he had done his, you know, his, he tracked her down to tell her that what was going on. And she said, I, my, my whole life is coming apart. And I said, ma'am, where's your truck? She said, told me, and I said, you know, I have, I have a friend up there. I could call him and see if he could kind of see what's going on and, and try to rearrange and maybe get it repackaged and we could get that sent to where you want it to be sent. So I called the guy, we made it work. I talked to her and she said that I asked her spiritual questions, and she said, you know, I was raised Jehovah Witness. She said, but I ran from that because they condemned me. When I started to love to dance and, and the artistic expression that I had, you know, they condemned me and said that Jehovah would never love me for that, would never approve of that. And I said, dude, excuse me, I might not have said dude, but <laughs> dude S, I don't, uh, but... <laughs> I said, our God is a creator God. You talk about artistic. He, he dances over us, the Bible says, with joy. Are you kidding me? I said, he loves you. He put that inside of you. And she began to weep again. Long story short, that young lady gave her life to Jesus that day. On a day that I wanted to be in my book, leave me alone. <laughs> what is the best that could happen? So Jesus go ahead and says to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must, so he says it, I must stay at your house today. And he came down at once. So this is his response. This is Zacchaeus' response. Now, we look at this guy, and we make this request, and we have this interaction. We don't know what's going to happen, right? But Zacchaeus' response is, yes. <laughs> at once he comes down, and he welcomed Jesus gladly. Wow. Leonard Ravenhill made this comment. He said, the opportunity of a lifetime must be seized during the lifetime of the opportunity. I want to say that again, and I know it's up here. But the opportunity of a lifetime must be seized during the lifetime of the opportunity. We have so many opportunities that will come our way, and we must seize the opportunity in the lifetime of the opportunity and not let it go, not let hesitation pull us back, not let my book... <laughs> as much as I want to, not that I'm perfect. Uh, I, I have denied some disruptions. <laughs> you know, I wanna, I wanna say something real quick about a name, the power, prophetic nature of someone's name. He says Zacchaeus, like he said Mary, and I don't wanna go through, that's another sermon altogether and the, the way God changes people's names and how powerful names are. But he says his name, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, a loving, caring way. Sometimes when I'm uh, on, on the road and passing through somewhere and I get in a conversation with somebody, I may ask them, I say, so what's your name? And they'll tell me, and I'll go, well, what's your name mean? And, you know, they go, well, or they might know, but most of the time they don't. And they said, well, I don't really know. I said, well, hey, man, I'll just Google it right here. Let's just find out what your name means. And then I'll give them their name. And you know what? There is something powerfully prophetic in sharing someone's name and what it means and how it opens a door because that name is special, right? Like Dave, David, whatever. <laughs> I was in a, another restaurant situation and this girl came up and she was, you know, just very kind and that and I, she didn't have a name tag, and I just said, you know, excuse me, I, I don't want to just say, hey, you, uh, what's your name? 
And so she told me her name, and I said, do you know what it means? She says, no. So I, I looked it up, and it meant courageous, courageous. I go, wow, that's powerful. Man, you, God gave you that name. Did you know that? I mean, I know your parents named you that, but you are a courageous person, and God, God's named you that. And uh, she goes, well, okay, thank you. <laughs> She goes back, and we have, you know, conversa- you know, back and forth conversations as the food comes and back. And Anyhow, she comes back at the final time and says, is there anything else that you need? And I said, yeah. I said, don't you ever forget what your name means and that God gave you that name. And she goes, and she starts to cry. I don't know. I, I, I make women cry. I don't, <laughs> except my wife. I don't, I, hopefully, I, I don't make my wife cry, but... And she, she's crying. She, I go, what, what's the matter? And she goes, you'll never know how much I needed to know the, name, the meaning of my name today. I said, why? She said, I was back there on the phone with my, my close friend, my best friend, and she just shared with me that her brother committed suicide. And I began to start to lose it. And then I remembered what you told me my name meant, that my name meant courageous. And I knew that I needed to be courageous for my friend. And I go, wow, that is so powerful. I I said, can I pray for you? I said, I don't want to embarrass you. I said, you just look at me. I'll look at you and I'll pray like like you're, you know, taking another order or something. Dessert or something. And so I just looked at her in the eyes and I prayed with her and tears are rolling down her cheeks. God ministered to her that day. We were passing through on our way to, and God gave us a divine disruption. Commitment to pray. I've made a commitment. My wife and I have made a commitment that anyone that comes on our property and we catch them. Sometimes those Amazon guys and girls, they're, they're a little quick. You know, I don't quite catch him quick enough. But if I'm outside or I'm, you know, casually doing something and they come up the driveway or whatever, or, they, or someone that's going to fix something on my property, I will, the quickest way to go vertical with somebody is to pray for them. And I find that m- most people are open to prayer. And so, anyhow, I had this gentleman. He came and he had, his company had put in some uh, um, sliding glass doors and but there was a little bit of a leak, and so he came back to kind of check it out and fix it. And while he was standing there, you know, he's on my property, so I'm going to ask to pray for him. And so Sergio was his name, and I said, I saw on his, bra- on his bracelet, there was an autism bracelet on his wrist. And I said, I said Sergio, I said, what's the, what's the, what's the meaning of the bracelet? Why? What do you, why do you have that on your wrist? And he goes, and this guy was tough dude, man, tattoos all over, you know. And when I said that, he said, you know, I said, I, I have a, a, a young boy that's got autism, and it's been really hard for us, and on my wife in particular. And anyhow, he said, you know, I, you know, uh, I keep telling her, man, it's, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. It's gonna, this child is going to grow up and be awesome. You know, but she's struggling. And uh, I said, well, I appreciate you, you know, I appreciate you sharing that with me. Um, I said, would you mind if I just prayed for you? He goes, yeah, sure. So I laid my hand on his shoulder. And again, thank God this was a man this time. But he just started to weep. And he looked up at me, and he said, what was that? I go, what was what? He goes, man, I, I felt something. And I go, that was probably God. And I explained that a little bit. He goes, wow, wow, that was powerful. I go, okay. And then he came back two weeks later to check on, his, on the work again. And I said, Sergio, how you doing? He goes, man, dude, that prayer, it was powerful. 
He, I go, well, God's all powerful, man. And he goes, no, no, man, it was powerful. He said, I went back, I went back to, uh, what, I don't remember the name, Excel Windows, I think. Isn't Excel Windows? I went back to Excel, and I, I told all the people that worked there, dude, I went there, this guy, he laid his hands on me, he prayed for me, I felt something, I cried. It was powerful. <laughs> He was telling all his workers, his co-workers. I go, wow, Sergio, that's amazing. That's awesome. He goes, yeah, I even told my wife. I called her right after you prayed for me. And I said, man, this dude prayed for me. And, oh, man, it was powerful. She wants to meet you. (laughs) A divine disruption. In verse 7, it says, all the people saw this and began to mutter. He has gone to be the guest of sinners, man. The public opinion, right? Always wanting to sway us, always wanting to deter us. We don't know how people are going to respond. What are they going to say at work and all that kind of stuff. Galatians 1.10 says this, be bold in your faith and live it out regardless of what other people think. Respect others' opinions, but let God's opinions dictate your life. In verse 8, it says, but Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now, I'll give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I'll pay back four times the amount. Because Jesus didn't hesitate. He seized the opportunity. A life was transformed. A life was changed. I'm a little reluctant to show this slide, but this is a, a huddle of a football team, and it just happens to be the Packers. Sorry. Uh, (laughs) You know, a huddle in a football game, that's not a good view, right? (laughs) Oh, my gosh. (laughs) A huddle in a football game, 80,000 people, they don't pay money for a ticket to see a bunch of 11 men be in a huddle for two and a half hours. Right? No, no, they want some action. I mean, what if you went to an NFL game? Bears, whatever. (laughs) For two and a half hours, or New England, or whatever. What if you went to that NFL game, and and for two and a half hours you watched 11 men stand in a huddle and talk to each other? That's not what you paid for, right? I mean, the huddle is important, but the huddle isn't the game. The game is played at the line of scrimmage. It's breaking the huddle, going and executing the play that's called, right? The challenge for us is that when we come to church, it's a huddle. A play is being called. A play is being called to be executed outside the front doors of this building. We're not trying to, as a force, change the lives of people per se in this service. We want to be equipped to go out these doors and do battle against the enemy. Take back ground that was his, but now it's God's. To respond to divine disruptions And when Satan lines up against us, what difference will it make? What difference will it make that we are Christians? Verse 9, Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save that which is lost. Zacchaeus, you know, I kind of wonder what happened to Zacchaeus after all this? And I I did a little research, and the early church fathers uh, imply that he became the bishop of Caesarea, the church in Caesarea. That he went from being a tax collector to a a tithe collector. No, uh, (laughs) I want to, some of you have probably heard of the movie or the TV series, The Chosen, right? I want to show you a clip, and I'm going to be closing here in just a minute. So, (laughs) 
We must tell we, someone. We, we must tell everyone. We must tell everyone. Everyone. Yes. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We've waited for this for so long. So long. He's on. He's on. He's on. He's on. He's on. He's on. Oh, it's okay. What will you name him? Jesus. We will name him Jesus. I must go. People must know. 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 I'd like to, I'd like to pray for those this morning that might be here. Uh, maybe like Zacchaeus, you've been coming to church and you put yourself out on a limb to get a good look at Jesus. To get a good look at Jesus. And he's been calling you. No, the Holy Spirit's always at work in spite of our imperfections, right? And that's the point. God uses you, not because you know everything in the Bible, but just because you're you and you have a relationship and you're obedient. That's where the hesitation comes because we think we have to know everything. And you don't. You just got to ask someone their name or just... Say, can I pray for you? And just put your hand on their shoulder and, and just pray a simple prayer and the Holy Ghost does the rest, right? <laughs> it's so, it's easy. It's just overcoming that hesitation. But Christ has been calling your name. Mary. John, Jay. It's time for you to come down from the tree of observation and welcome him gladly. It's time to come down from the limb of observation and welcome him gladly into your heart, your home. Father, I, I pray for those that may be in this service that they have come to church and they've gone to a, an event because they just want a little closer look at you. But maybe they just haven't come down from the tree yet. But today, you're inviting them, saying, I, I want to be at your house. I want to be in your home. I want to be in your life. And I pray that this morning, people would welcome you gladly. For those of us that have feared and hesitant and, and unable to feel like they can open up a conversation with someone, I pray they would come down off that tree limb and, and say, Holy Spirit, I welcome you gladly to change me, change my outlook, change me as a person. We ask it in the mighty name of Jesus. So, as you break this huddle this morning and you go out those, those front doors, that you would see and have revealed to you the vast opportunities that are out there. And that as you pass through Walmart, as you pass through Avanti's, <laughs> which I don't want to pass through very quickly, pass through Starbucks, pass through the Bone Student Center, pass through the hallways, that you'd be looking for a divine disruption to 
to your final destination. Opportunities I like to call divine disruptions. Amen. That's a good word this morning. Hearing is good. Living is better. Hearing is good. Living is better. So let's go forth in the power of the Holy Spirit to live out this truth. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word that's been spoken to us and spoken over us today. Lord, I pray that we find good soil in each one of our hearts and that by the power of your Holy Spirit we would go forth and live this truth. Lord, that we would not just be passing through each place and through each moment, but instead we'd have hearts tuned to the voice of your Spirit. And Lord, that we would see those divine opportunities, those divine disruptions to share your love with the people all around us. Pray, Lord Jesus, that you give us grace to do this. Lord, I pray that you would turn your face towards us so that your word would go forth to the nations and the good news to all people. Help us to do it, to go and to live out this mission. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Go with God this morning. Feel free to stop by and, uh, and check out the, uh, the, the table we've got for the hunt. If you haven't yet dropped off candy or signed up to join us, we really hope that you can be a part of that. And also one last thing, if you don't have any place to be, we have an, a baptism service going to take place during second service. We have a very special gentleman that's going to follow the Lord's instruction and invitation into the waters of baptism. This is an amazing testimony. So we invite you if you want to stick with us for one more service. And I promise to do 